Good day everyone and welcome to another vlog. As you can see, we have our advisors. In this um, image, I made sure I had the, the old advisors, which you can see over here, as well as the new advisors after giving their faces a little bit more of a distinguishing factor. As you can see, they still retain their general look, but you can see the chin is stronger on this one. The mouth is more prominent, got a few lines on the forehead over there to just make the gaze a little bit more focused, as well as this one uh, who also looks a little bit older. It's amazing what a few lines can do. Um, I did also adjust uh, the chin on this one, like you can see over here. Um, so it's not major changes, but if you make enough small changes, you will have a different face. I also changed their outfits. Uh, the, as you can see at the top, I did leave it pretty much the same, but it's not the top that's the, the difference maker in this case. So let me show you what they look like individually. So this is advisor number one. Specifically pay attention to how the shadows fall, and now I'm going to show you the new one. Look at that. There's a slight difference, but there is still a difference. You can also see how the head has changed. This is advisor number two. Again, look at the shadows and the slight change on the head. And the last advisor is pretty much, I left the, the outfit the same. I mean, why change all three if you change two and the other is still distinctive? And it's just kind of silly, you know, so. I think this one's face also had the biggest change. <laughs> yeah, you can see the ears are a little bit more pinned mouth seems to be a little smaller but yeah you get the point it's just a different look okay next we have some new hieroglyphics we've got the plague of darkness i don't ever recall seeing like this level of black in um, hieroglyphics however it's still possible they may have depicted it another way by simply just leaving it white with the lines indented i don't know wasn't there Plus, a lot of it is destroyed, so yeah, you only have so much reference to go on. And this is where uh, God told Moses to take some ash from the furnace and sprinkle it heavenward, and it will become a dust that will cause boils to break out on man and beast. Okay, next one we have is the sand being uh, turned into lice. So I didn't like go and model little lice because you wouldn't be able to see it in hieroglyphic um, detail. Uh, think of hieroglyphics sometimes as being a little bit low resolution because it is um, indented in uh, what do you call a wet mortar um, rendering, whatever you want to uh, refer to it as. So you're going to have to think a little bit on the side of using like Legos. You know, you're going to have to think in a little bit more lower resolution. So in this case, we have Aaron striking the 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 dust, uh, the sand, and it turning into lice, uh, which will also attack man and beast. I have to say, using um, particles on a surface that's supposed to be flat in the end, and to still have a sense of depth the way you want it to is, is quite challenging. I'm going to show you what Aaron's uh, rod looks like in the next one after I've shown you what it looks like. Boom. Water into blood. Now this one had quite a bit of compositing that needed to be done. And it admittedly could use some buildings in the background or pyramids or whatever uh, because it is not a sparsely populated area. But I didn't want the focus to be on the background in the first place. Having said that, as soon as it opens, you don't really notice the water. You notice the flat white with the <laughs> with the sand. But having said that, it still looks cool. So let me show you what the compositing for this looks like. Because we have two particle systems, uh, we have the water waves, which are individual shapes with a freestyle applied and subdivision. And of course, we have a cube here that's pulled down into the water, and we have a plane that's displaced to look like sand. So I want to show you what Aaron's rod specifically looks like and how this thing is layered. So when you're in Blender, just turn on screen the gas keys. Not that I 
not going to really show anything, but you get the point. Okay. So this is in Blender. This is what the scene looks like. We have a basic plane that's distorted to look like a landscape. We have our two particles, blood, water. And this is our particle system, just like that. Got a little gate on the front to keep it from all falling off so that it actually fills the space. And there we have our water and our hieroglyphics over that. And this is Aaron's rod. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And of course you do need, uh, that's the emitter for the water particles. And of course you do need to composite this in a clever way because the lines will not go over the particles. Mm, goodness, sorry about the quality of the view. It doesn't interpolate properly. But anyway, uh, you can see the the updated hieroglyph for the hail. Now these cows come from the Genesis 1 project. I just removed the armature so they can just like be static in their position. I added some lightning bolts and created some rough clouds. And of course the servants and the grass are still exactly the same. One thing that I would mention though is that I used edge for most of the um, objects here instead of freestyle because they are too high resolution and there are too many objects. Freestyle tends to um, use geometry, so if it cannot see clearly enough, and if it cannot process it quick enough, your computer will in all likelihood freeze, which I think did happen with this particular hieroglyph, but thankfully I saved before I tried to render it, <laughs> so I could uh, continue with it afterwards. And this is of course the hieroglyphics that go on the gates of the palace. Now when you have your gates, you have got two big walls that sort of stand next to each other with a big gap in the middle. And in that gap, they also mortared and plastered a, a fairly high a doorway. And on that doorway, they had a few levels of hieroglyphics. Like you can see, actually three levels of hieroglyphics. So this is just uh, using the parable of the unforgiving servants, uh, characters, and even the poses and just reordering them and changing them so that they present a new kind of scenario for various things. Um, I really like it. I really, I really do. Uh, the sun would have been different, though. It would have had triangles for the, the sun rays, but uh, the Egyptians didn't do that as far as I, I know. I've looked at a lot of hieroglyphics, and I didn't see that at all. So I didn't have peace about leaving it like that, so just a big spot there. And now we are going to scroll through the progress of the palace until the current progress and then I'm going to show you a video tour of what the palace looks like now. I rendered in OpenGL so it's not perfect but it still looks cool so let me just show you that. Of course this is where we started just working on the pillars, making some changes, that's the old hail coming down. I also turned the texture to face the correct way, so it's no longer inverted, as you can see. This is an example of a doorway. This is where the gates are applied and the new pillars are fixed, as well as the scroll work on the walkway. As you can see, there's nothing added here yet. This is the updated one. You can see on the outside wall, there's also a lot of hieroglyphics. I do remember that on one of the textures, it turned out that most of the bottom symbols were very thin, so it creates like a white line from the distance, and this is more than likely what that is. Okay, and here Pharaoh has some statues. Now I do agree that the skirt is longer than you would typically find on the pharaohs in Egypt, but this is the way the king was modeled. And when I tried to remove it or shorten it, it looked really, really strange. It did not look like you would find on the statues. It, it kind of looked 
like a big part of the skirt was broken off instead of just uh, neatly cut. It was weird. It was really weird. So I just kept it as is. This is the overall width of the statues. Now the, the whole complex moves a lot further back behind the camera, even as it is right now. But this would be the main entryway, if you if I can put it that way. This would be the far end. And all the way back to the back of the image over here would be the entrance. So this would be a separate hall. This would be a, a an open court here where the, the pharaoh starts. Ah, oh, the pharaoh statues are. Ah. And right behind that is the open court. And right behind that is just this open area over here. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention about the particles last week was to make sure that you do not have any doubles. Doubles tend to double place your pillars. So just double make sure that there's, there's nothing like that. You'll also notice that on the, the Plague of Darkness pillars that there's a black uh, peak. That's purely because of the unwrapping. You will not see in the final video the tops of these pillars. So going all out and putting hieroglyphics where there is no hieroglyphics or putting a special surface there, it, it's truly a waste of resources. Just work efficiently. <laughs> Another overall shot with the sky added. Obviously, this is the sky from Esther. Another close-up. Hieroglyphics added to Pharaoh statue pillars over here. The um, ceiling added for the walkway with hieroglyphics and stars. Okay, now for the video. And also, if you do get motion sickness easy from watching video, then you might want to uh, skip this part. <laughs> so, um, let's play. <laughs> I really like this video, it's really cool. Uh, one thing that I will mention though is the textures do not look exactly like this in the final render. They do have more high definition and more polish, as well as different adjustments. I set most of the textures to extend and not repeat. So issues like the hand, let me just get a nice render of that issue. Here, over there, you can see that little hand and the foot. You will not see that in the final render because the texture ends somewhere around here and I set it to extend. So all it will do is it'll just draw the lines there and this area would be white. Uh, another thing is you can see this, uh, the hieroglyphics here on the, on the pillar. It was done using the RGB to intensity feature that is very rarely used. I wanna show you that quickly. Make it shadeless so we can see it clearly. I'm going to set it to render only so we don't have any of this weirdness. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is a nicely colored texture. If you go over here to your uh, texture settings and you go down, you find RGB to intensity. If you check that, it will become purple and white. 
Which, if that is what you're going for, is not a bad thing. I mean, this would work for postage stamp animations or whatever. Since a lot of their stuff is done in the negative, if I remember correctly. So to fix this, all you do is you say negative, and then you choose what color you want this to be. So let's say you were going for a green screen. You can just make it like a darker green like that. Or you can just make it black like I made it black for the pillars. And it still reacts with the normal values as well. Now, because it's shadeless, you're not going to see any normals, but I can quickly turn shadeless off. There we go. So you have more than enough detail in the texture alone to get this result. Now, additionally, I made a small list. This is not even all that I still need to work on, but this is just a, a small list of things that still need to get done. Uh, I still need to model um, Miriam, three to four female characters. I am in three age groups, three to four male characters in three age groups. And um, multiply those by two by just making some simple color changes on the characters. And that's for the Hebrews. For the Egyptians, I still need to make uh, three to four male characters, also age groups, three to four female characters, different age groups, and multiply those two by also changing a few colors. I also need to make guards. Obviously, they're the king's firstborn and his wife, and the assistant that he uh, keeps sending out to go call Moses and Aaron after messing up. Other models that uh, particularly cover animals that still need to be made are the locusts, the lice, the mosquitoes, bulls, chickens, geese, ducks, frogs, fish, cobras, pigeons, flies, dogs. I, st I do have horses. I do have a horse. Remember Esther? So, yay, I have a horse. And, of course, a crocodile. Now, I'm sure there's more than that, like a few birds or whatever, since this is a, a very open nature scene. I still need to make palm trees, still need to make uh, pots, reeds, the the Nile River itself. I did add fish, didn't I? Yeah, I did add fish. Um, so so there's, there's quite a bit of things that still need to get done. But I know from a week like this that's been extraordinarily productive. I mean, we've got um, quite a few new hieroglyphics done. We got... Uh, more pillars added, we got the statues finished, and it was a really, really productive week. So I want to show you uh, another new hieroglyphic that I didn't show you at the start. And this is the Parable of the Sower. Now I'm sure you guys have heard the Parable of the Sower before. Now, uh, unfortunately, mine is not 100% accurate to the parable, which is kind of frustrating, and I only noticed that after finishing it, <laughs> which is kind of ironic. Um, but I really do like the, the result here. There we go. So you see, uh, what I did was I removed the, the hieroglyphics over here so I can put the title there. And, of course, I added the entire parable here, as well as the meaning that uh, Jesus gave afterward. So it's almost uh, like a chapter image, but it's not the entire chapter, so <laughs> it's about half. And that is pretty much it for this week. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Have a great one, and God bless you.